screen yeah Here we go. Can you all see my screen there and uh, hear me? All good. Okay, let's rock and roll. So, you know, the whole idea of the shift training on a Tuesday morning is purely so that we can get into that habit to show up for our businesses. Because we keep referring to you having a retail business. Real estate is retail hours, 66, 366 days a year. And that's why we keep saying your time management is so important. And and what were my the, the again I'm repeating what I said last week the the plan the outcome for this is because the market is changing we had it yesterday in the meeting where people the activity is there Kenny said that um, he's taking the office but he's not closing the the client we we also said and we discussed the interest rate where a client that qualified three months ago for a 500,000 rand home is not qualifying for a 500,000 rand home anymore so your database and the intensity of your database and how you work it is is very important at this point of time Yes, the other thing I want to say to you is why I want to talk and spend some time on farming. Just to bring us always back to the basics. You know that 30, 60, 90 we talk about in Keller Williams. is just to come back to that is so that we are not a victim of, let's call that then a big victim of the shifting market. It should not affect your business. The pendulum is just moving. It is just a mindset and a perspective of what the market is offering you. You as a realtor is still servicing everybody in that neighborhood. What is the most important thing that everybody wants in life or has to have? It's a roof over your head because you have to sleep somewhere tonight. And you have to put your things down somewhere tonight. So, what is this farming? And, 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 and I want you now to think, remember very clearly. Although Keller Williams is an open area, and we're going to discuss that later, Keller Williams is about your database. In you drive, and that's what I always say start and work your farming where you live. And start small to go big. Everything around you in a kilometer radius. And then you move it to a two kilometer radius. When you're doing at night. Or all that people in that database. All those people when you drive out of your house. Or when you walk out of your complex door. Are all shareholders in your business. You need to cultivate and get to know that relationship as fast as possible. All real estate transactions happens eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose, and belly to belly. So the quicker you get through the front door and get that person in your little bookie, in your phone. Because every person that's in your phone, whether it's a cousin, an auntie, a best friend, it's your sphere of influence is shareholders in your business. All you need to do is do the matching, understand the numbers to cultivate those shareholders to cash in so that the money can be in your bank account. But we want to go back to that farming area. And in my days when I was still an active selling agent driving my team, we only... Focused Sun Valley, Bridal Park, Kailami, A.H. Belu, Glen Finnes. That five suburbs and then we had Samanandi and Monavoni because of pricing. We specialized in country living, equestrian properties. The area is known. The area is known for the most horses per square meter in the world. And it was purely my passion and my what, what I did was having horses and I bred horses. And the area that I worked was only 1,488 households, those five suburbs, ranging from one hectare up to eight and a half hectare 
properties. So a farm is that segment, that area. Um, Carla is working uh, uh, with Montana. With me. Carla, where are you? Uh, Sinnebel Montana, Magali Skryen op die stadium. It's a bit too wide. It's a bit too wide. We're going to talk about it. Now we're going to talk about it. It needs to get smaller. Right. It, you need to have three little shoppies, actually, if you listen to this. But I'm going to discuss it with you now. How are we going to work through this farming? Inai is Seaworth Estate. I know the so is uh, Silver Lakes and Knox is um, Zambali. That is your segments. Narrow your market that it becomes that niche so that you can have market dominance. He who controls the stock controls the market. And that's what we're going to discuss now in these slides that are coming. So this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to run through five myths and give you a truth. And I want you, because it's a really small group, interact. Um, interrupt me because I'd like to hear what you say. So this is the story. Farming takes too long and costs too much money. To get to know everybody in Seaworth Estates and all their properties, etc. It is not going to so much just happen in three months argumentatively. Let's say Seaworth Estate has got 500 Households argumentatively. I don't know, you know how many properties are there. Oh, and there's combinations of sectional titles and full titles, um, I think. So, yeah, I don't know. How many, do you know how many properties there are? No, well, I haven't really studied to. There are a lot of complexes as well as freehold. Yes, yes. Wow, now you've given me a reason to, to show you how this is going to change your business and life today. Thank you for the vulnerability and sharing, Ina. Because farming can become the core of your business. Everything that you are doing is that farming. Bringing that pipeline and customers into the business because sooner or later they are going to have to spend some time with you eye to eye nose to nose because they have to cash in it does take time farming is not quick at six that's why we keep saying it takes a thousand days in a new business whether you've made it or not and i've said it on the training and yes the story remember the thousand days we are busy preparing for walking into dragon's den I, I don't know who of you have seen it, but um, Dragon's Den on BBC is where you um, have this business with this product, etc. And you walk in there and you present it to these billionaire um, um, people and you say, listen, I need £100,000 so that my business can go to the next level. The information of this farming is what you're going to use as your reporting to show your clients. Remember, you don't carry actually physical stock. It's just service delivery. Which brings me to, yeah, but Pam Golding has already got 20 listings and what, what. Do you think Pick and Pie and Checkers didn't do their homework before they walked in there? Knowing the numbers. And believe you me, if you go and ask those clients about the Pam Goldings and the Remaxes and all of those that are in the area, it's not always a perfect world. No one is ever as dominant as you think. Because let me tell you some stories. And I want you to go and experience this when you do listings. You know how many times when I was an agent, I would walk into a listing appointment and then there's the other company's very sexy brochures and things are lying there on the table. This listing has been on the market, has had had a mandate. Uh, it's gone through a sole mandate. Now the mandate has expired. Now we're back on the open market. Then you get the call. Remember you did the valuation for us or can you please come and list our property and then the other agents, brochures and everything are lying there. I love asking this question and I want you to ask this question when you go and do an open listing. It's already on the market. Dear client, please tell me 
what did the other agents not do that you expect from me? Before you even do your presentations and carry on, and because sometimes we walk in and we are so ready with the information and we want to say to that client, listen, dude, here's the story. This is me. Get on, get in, get on, get out. It's not that. You know, there's strategic st ways to go about this. And hear me what the sellers are going to say. Yeah, that poppy from that shoppy, she was here. She did beautiful photos. She put it on the internet. She brought one client. Um, it's now three months later. I've been trying to phone her for the past two weeks. I say no, her it could be a him. What is that reputation? It's always about what do people, when we bride tonight, and your friend says, sure, I'm also thinking of putting our property on the market, etc. Do you want that bright conversation to be, oh, please just don't use roller. You know, that thing is just back, but it's now banachut and it's brain flight. Or do you want them to say, dude, I know a lot of what, what? You have to speak to Rolo. Myth. A farm limits you to that area or speciality. Why did I put that is because of me being an equestrian property specialist. It's not something that everybody does like you decide tomorrow you start selling country living and horsey properties. Because show jumpers is not going to have a dressage arena because they need turning things for jumps. Dressage people, if it's a jumping arena, it's not going to fit. If your horse is 17 hands and the stables on the property is only three meter by three meter, your horses won't be able to sleep in it and turn. I know it's stupid little things like that, but that's got an effect on it. Okay. Um, and I get it, that farm. But you have to have a starting point. Everybody in Seaworth Estate, everybody in Silver Lakes, everybody, Cineville, Montana, you know, Carla's building two business, you know, two legs, expansion legs here. It's a lot of information. And that farm of yours should bring you, that's why I say that a farm does not have to be your only source of business. Because why? Yes, the farm. Yes, the core business, the mug and bean. And they must bring me that outside referral in Cape Town, in Puff Adder, in Bloemfontein. Because it goes about lead conversion, quicker conversion, quicker money. That's why there's a buyer side and a seller side to each transaction in Keller Williams. And here, here is where I want to, um, um, we're going to talk about your budget and knowing your numbers later. I want to jump here for a second to the power of Lightstone. And that's why everybody has got a persona fight Lightstone account so that you can draw all the information. Please start with the suburb reports. So that you can know what is the trend of, and stop me here because we do have time. Are you all okay with Lightstone and the suburb reports to know where to start in your suburb knowing the numbers? Please interrupt me. Then I can show you and we can sort it out. Inay, I think you muted. I would appreciate if you can just refresh us. Awesome. We do have time. Let me stop my um, stop presenting this, and then I'm going to pop into your entire screen there, and let's pop into Lightstone. If I go too fast, please stop me. So, what I like about Lightstone is, let's start with, there's the suburb report. So, let's go suburb report. Um, and now I'm going to use you now as an example. 
uh, C word estate. Here we go. C word estate. I go down. I go search. There I've got Belitoville. Let's view. Okay. Listen to this beautiful script. There's everything. Where you need to go, where the boundaries are of that suburb to understand the number. Here is what I love about what it says. So there it is. There is 603 freeholds um, 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 in, the, in your suburb, your farming area. There's 257 flats, sectional titles. There is, um, and that's, the, uh, that's quite a high LSM group. So the average incomes of those suburbs is 115 to 145. Why is that information there? Because when you're busy talking to clients and you're busy doing viewings and qualifying the buyers, and you say, so what do you do? Where do you work? And you realize uh, this two yakis is the husband and the wife is just, just putting together 50,000 rand a month. They can't afford to live in that suburb. It gives you an overview of the ages and how, how long the people are in ownership in the area, right? So why is that important? We, the 34, 37, so let's look at that, eight, 5 to 7, 8 to 10 years. So it means that those people are... But And that's where the statistics comes in, that properties in South Africa, every seven to eight years change hands. Either a new extended bond or renovations or a new owner or a valuation. Go and look back at when people have sold homes and changed it. So um, I'm going to say it now and probably repeat myself in one of my slides later. When you are in the shifting market offering free valuations, to the clients, right? You are going to focus in your lead generation on those people that own properties in that suburb seven to eight years. Why? Statistics show that people are interested in having a valuation or change ownership or new bonds. There they give you the age groups, right? Um, let's go down to this because this is easier. Yes, look at that. So, there is in 2020 and in 2021. So, the green means sectional title. The blue means freehold. So, there's the number. In 2021, the average sectional title price was 2.2 million. The average full title was X. Right. How many sales happened in the suburb? Um, 19 flats sold last year. 44 um, households. So five um, sectional titles already and 15 homes for the year. And look at the prices. So the sectional titles had some growth, but the averages in the full titles has come down. This is valuable information you're going to use when you are valuating other properties or discussing trends in the suburb. Dear buyer, last year so many has sold, etc. So... If you look at private property and property 24, everything that's in Seaworth Estates should probably go inside. I'm telling you now, in the entire Seaward Estate, they normally say you look at the percentage of transfers the year before. 70% of that is normally your current listings in the market, in the number on a cycle, where a 20% of that 70% is normally incorrectly priced because. Seller expectation and experience of agent. And you're going to hear it when my MAPS coach is here with us, Jessica Fox, because I love what she's saying. This shift is a skills-based market. Please remember that. Is it okay? Does it make sense? Do you find value in me showing you this? Definitely. Okay. 
So what I like about this is I can't use the calculator now because I'm on the phone here on the one side. If you want to work your number, because we are going to discuss it later, you know there's no point you need to bring 100,000 GCI gross commission income every month, but you're running around selling 500,000 rent flats. Somewhere along the line, the income versus the bond payment and the BMW payment is going to run into a problem. So if you go and look at the number, if there was the average price was 2.7, let's say at 5% commission is going to give you X. So if I want to have 10% market share, which means I've done 4.4 um, units of the 44, which means I've done four transactions in 2021 at an average of X, which can already tell me that the gross commission from four um, full title sales in Seawards Estates is about 600,000 Rand income for you for the year if you only do 10% um, in a. And that's how you will know the C word, uh, the, the sectional title one, how you will have a, you see there's no vacant stand sales because there ain't no land there anymore. The number of execution, that's just properties that were sold on auction. Whilst we are on it, I quickly want to jump just back to home. I do have time and go to just remind on property report. So there you can search IDs, whatever, or street um, might be. Um, I'm going to pop into, or there's your map search option where you can just click on the property. So let's say, uh, let's go township, Silver Lakes. No, come for any vine. Oh, I must enter a what what. Man, come on, sorry, I need to go Silver Lakes too. There you can make it satellite. Um, where we're on stats was there in a couple of strooms for in a gang. Um, van er bij om met rand Pretoria bronkers spreid. Silver Lakes is gonna pop up here. Kalin en right en die Silver Lakes. So six fountains. Let's just go to proper Silver Lakes. The proper, proper. There it is. Now I know I'm busy driving in La Quinta Road. I've seen this La Quintas on the market. And then I go and click on it. There, it gives you all the stand numbers, all the information. The pipeline you should be working should have the owner's name and surname, ID number, let it summer get a birthday campaign. And then you start chasing the telephone number. Have the stand number and the street number also on your detail. If you go and look on Edge where you capture the information on the contacts, that's where you start capturing this information. Because remember, you're growing this business. And the day you're pulling the reporting is from um, um, yeah, my age. You want to capitalize on the information. Let's start, sell easy. So again, that system is only going to be as great as the information you feed it to give you information back. It's easy when there's 50 people. When there's 300, it changes it. Look here, there we go. Click view. And this is what we mean farming your area, getting to know the people who lives where, street for street, start small to go big. There's all the information. Um, they bought the land. They bought it in 1999, so they've had it forever. They've probably built this. There's their ID numbers. Lovely. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Get, a, get them on a campaign. There, the number keys show me all the other sales that has happened. You'll see later in my slides, I'm going to talk about the current sales. So there it shows you the ones that are blue is the ones where there is an offer pending. They're waiting for bonds or something. So the moment the attorney captures it to get the rights clearances, etc., then Lightstone and that information fee. Lightstone is connected to all the banks, all the councils, all the deeds offices, and when deed and ghost convey, the software the attorneys use. So there you can say, 
listen, that property, La Quinta X, there's already an offer on it that came through in, because there's the sale date in January. Now you would think in June, what are they waiting for? There's maybe something. If you know some of the properties that should not be reflecting because it's going to have a problem on your valuation, you can click the delete option here. So it would give you a comparable there, but please be aware of the dates of when these things has happened so that you are aware of the transfers that and 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 but you're gonna learn your, your report. Now, what I've learned is these reports are not wrong in that comparable. <coughs> So if the client is at X and you know in that suburb uh, the average selling price, if you look at the history of the suburb report, is X, why is it not selling? Anything that's, you know, price, price, price. The only reason why something doesn't sell. There it tells you the different banks. So this looks like it's a private bond on this or it could be because of their nationality or religion or belief system that it could be another bank or it could be overseas money. There's the history. There's the suburb trend already in the report. So if I look at what they've achieved in pricing in 2021 and where they are at today, this property is perfectly priced at 3950. There you can already work out how much money you will make out of uh, 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 so out of 12 transactions at 3.7 for a full title or so, um, and that's only a 10% market share. Let me think about this. Just out of Silver Lakes, you're going to cap out of one transaction a month, and your income will be about 1.6 million for the year in um, Silver Lakes. Was that powerful? Did it give you insight? Please stop me. Who can I answer? All good. Good, good, Rolo. Um, it's this was very informative for me because I didn't know how to do this. <laughs> awesome. Inay, that I bring insight for you on your C word and to know what your number in your budgeting that we're gonna discuss be. Indeed, thanks, Rolo. Carla, jij en Rasou is jelle raag. Okay, great stuff. Right, let's pop on with this. It's all about mailers and mass marketing. Because I've had agents that say to me, you know, they come from a transactional traditional company and then they join us and they go, oh, all these codes and all these emailers going out. Listen, if you are not top at mind and leveraging the system, it's, it's a lot to get to all the activity because the database and the farming area, you know, you're going to do X amount of people and then go bigger and bigger. It's the synergistic impact of both marketing and prospecting. Listen, it, you're cultivating your income generating activity must be prospecting based and marketing enhanced. Let me explain the difference. The prospecting based meaning finding a way to quicker get eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose to that person in La Quinta Street because sooner or later it's going to match. Once the eyeball to eyeball is there, then they've learned to get to know you, they trust you, and they put value in who you are. You now have to systematically stay in contact with that line till the day it cashes in. And that's the power of our campaigns. The 8 by 8s the 12s, you're going to learn it in Ignite. You are going to see it in the red book again. The power of your mates and haven't met in our campaign and a simple policy and procedure for Carla Real Estate is when I had an appointment, I follow up with an email and then a phone call. Email, phone call, appointment. Email, phone call, appointment. And in my years of being a realtor, 
like the day when I joined Killer Williams and they kept on talking about your cycle of staying in contact with your database, your farmies, um, the email phone call appointment, email phone call appointment. And if you don't drive that reminder, please, the diary, I know we all love the diary. I'm so scared. They steal the diary. Then your prospecting history could disappear and you will not be in control of what that marketing enhanced the pretty quickies must be. Oh, you can stop and start your farming area uh, efforts. The 306090. You would not know whether your activities is working if you don't have a plan in the 135 and the 411. And if you implement it, that runs coincide with your budget and your numbers, knowing. I mean, there we have the fact that Rousseau Stevens needs to earn 1.6 million Rand out of Silver Lakes. Do me a favor. That is one transaction a month of a full title house at one point uh, three point eight million. How, how easy is that? To be able to achieve that, you should have stock. So that means I can already work the number. Um, so you should list three new properties a month on average if you want to sell one. And you have to do about 12 appointments if I work the number quickly. Knowing your number, knowing your facts, and you're going to work on it little bit by little bit. And this is where I feel so sorry for agents. They, And that's where the transactional traditional companies are not wrong in being area-based. I get it. But we want to take that and bring a different mindset to it so that that is your, your sphere of influence that grows, grows, grows. People start and then they realize too late, yeah, but I didn't look at my numbers. I didn't do this. Now I need to restructure areas, etc. Um, it takes time to do that. And you can't just change it and give it up every 90 days. You need to shift with it and fix it and find out what did I do that didn't work or what am I doing that I can duplicate to multiply on. 10 factors. Your goal. Understand your goal, your numbers, your budget. Is that size household and the history, if I look at the report, going to sustain my income? The location, does it work? You know, we all feel the type of people we hang with. Then you also need to look at, okay, now I look at Cineville. How many people do I know? Am I how am I going to break up Cineville and Montana in the areas? Am I going to focus on getting to know people in these age group or these streets? Or the people I haven't met in the suburb, but they are part of my mug and bean. They are, um, how am I going to put them together? And what is the importance of who needs to yell see me first? They, um, that's what I said as I'm repeating myself again in here. The average sales price in the area. How long was that thing on the market before? And this is where I kind of get a little bit. I wish we had the software to be able, because we are the only country really where open mandate exists. I mean, anywhere else in the world, you can only list the property once. It's in South Africa where open mandates exist. And that's why we can't have a true fact on when it was listed and how long it was on the market. And that's where I want to say, you know, private property, property 24 does say down there uh, on the reports how, how many days it's been on the market. This is valuable information that you need. And you're going to say to me, Rolo, but now you make me sit so many hours doing this, doing that. This is part of your lead generation, part of your plan, diving into the history and information of what that farming area is doing. The market conditions. Um, in I, I think we look on one of on your C word suburb report, the sectional title price went up. Can I tell you probably why? Because the virtual environment and the interest rate in 2021 was still low. So people have chosen to rather have a placky by the seer. Um, um, and then they can commute because they can work from there. King Shaka Airport is very close by. Where Seaworth Estate is located, it's easy access to all the other places, in my opinion. Okay, That's why sectional title was affordable in 2021 for people to have IC by this year because it could go either way. Your competition. 
whatever is on private property and on property 24 must be in your shop. You must know about it. Here's the script. Not everything you want to list necessarily. Okay? But you want to have a relationship with that client and start building it because don't ever say never is what I always want to say. That is still a client, whether it's mandated with Remax, it's still your client. It is still your responsibility in this skills-based shifting market to know everything. This is what I normally do. Hi, John, this is Rolo, what, what, what. I'm phoning from Keller Williams, etc. Um, I know your property is mandated with Remax. I'm not phoning to say I want to market it. But I am servicing other buyers and sellers in the area. And I would really like to just see your property so that I know what am I talking about when they are discussing with me the options that are in the market. What does it say? Like, hello, I want to come and check you out, Brew, but it doesn't mean I'm going to pick you. But it's a way for me to get a foot in the door so that I can cultivate on that relationship. Does that make sense? Slowly, once you've seen it and you've got to know the people, you can then choose, is this thing correctly priced? Does it need my effort? Because the quicker I need to rather focus on the tiny next door property because she's correctly priced and she's going to hit in that market. Quicker conversion, quicker money. Does that make sense? And, 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 you know, you're fit for your farm. Please, guys, that is so important. I've seen it so many times. The personality of the person doesn't fit the area where they're working. They're not happy. They don't have that, that vibe. Um, um, you can't sell homes in Zimbabwe of 12 million. But, you know, people are, they, they perception. People must look at you and then they do this. Uh-huh. You can't sell with a little um, Nissan Bucky 1000 that's worth 30,000 rand, um, 12 million rands homes in Zimbabwe. I'm sure Noxie is now probably falling off her chair going, Rolo, you naughty, naughty. But that's just, you know, I want to just give you a little giggle so that you can associate with your farm. And uh, I'm sure some of you have seen some dustbins of the people in the area. And think you don't know, always know how they get it right. Farming can become the core of your business. So I want to talk a little bit about now working your farm. And here's the truth. Farming can become the core of your business. Sorry, Rolo. Yeah, my Scott. I want to agree with you on that on that statement because they do judge you. They judge you not only with the Nissan or the car that you drive, also the clothes that you're wearing, you know, how you talk and everything. They, you know, it's it's a nature of the business I've learned that they will judge you. Also, it happens also when someone comes to sell something to me in my house, I do judge them. When I want someone to do something for me, I do judge them. So there's judgmental out there. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more with you. And thank you for being vulnerable, Knox. That's exactly what we do. It's just the, the, the creature of the being, if I can put it like that. And actually, you know, if you very enlightened and you go and you look at, no, you know, we shouldn't be judgmental because everybody has got the opportunity to show up for who they are. But that's just the being. That's what we do. If that person, I mean, in my days as an agent, um, I will have this incredible relationship for more than a week over the phone with this buyer. And you build this thing in your head about what it all is. And I mean, hear me out. I can sometimes be like the FBI, interrogating that buyer before I'm going to open that door. And a two hectare, 600 square meter home is a good to our, our viewing. And that's a lot of entertainment to keep a client like that ticking and what, what. So, um, and it's almost like that, that disappointment, I want to say, is like you've got the story in your head and then they arrive at the property and you thought, what? Six million rand home and you don't come with a Porsche or a big thing. You saw me arrive here in the little Skoro Skoro van and then you look at the dress coat and you're going, dude, how are you going to buy the 6 million rand home, which is wrong. 
because hear me out, I have had amazing sales with clients like that. Then they arrive because they know the agent is going like, what? You arrive with a score of score of bucky and tackies, but you want to buy six million. Meantime, back at the ranch, you know, to be able to afford homes of six million, you need to have a certain level of brains and income and ability. And uh, the buyers or the clients in that market is not necessarily stupid. Um, become your farm expert. So that's Monox. We, we, we people look at one another and we always have these preconceived ideas. And that's how we learn um, the power of understanding the value of contribution. You'll see the word contribution coming up now. So how to become that expert for free? You know, we've had it earlier where they say, I am lead generating and lead generating and I'm just not getting there and I'm spending all this money driving around and knocking on the doors and putting pamphlets out, etc. But that information you're gathering is giving you script and is giving you foundation to build from because it's going to change into money. So create a property search for yourself on your area on private property, property 24, go and register as a buyer, pick everything so that when there's a new listing coming on the market, you are the first one to know about it. The blue lines that are on the Lightstone reports of the properties that's got offers on it, please have a little look at it, drive past those addresses so that you, when you are presenting or value or speaking in your farming area, you know about the properties. The most powerful thing I've learned is those that are having an offer on them pending, get to know that attorney who was the agent that did the deal so that you can congratulate the seller when it registers so that you can get to know that new buyer that moves in there. Search past expired and for sale by owners. So we don't have that many for sale by owners in South Africa anymore. I see it lesser and lesser on the private properties and property 24th. The, the new rule of real estate around BPRA, et cetera, has changed it so much that I think because of the CPAs and that, that the sellers are realizing rather pay that commission and get somebody to do the job. But there is so many expired listings. If you don't know what in private property, probably 24 is in your area, the Pam Golding and Remax has got and what the times is and when they're going to expire. Today is the day in the shifting market. To relook at those listings, offer your services, reprice it and get it back with a new strategy. When I say preview your current listings, if you have Bobby Yarn 7 and Donkey 9 as two listings, I call it the five by five in your farming. You should spend intense time on the following. Five to the left, five to the right, five to the back, and five to the that way. Every current listing you have, you should know five people to the left of it, to the right of it, to the back of it, and across of it. It is one of the most powerful lead generating activity. If you don't know what to do, go to your area, drive around, find the boards, or go to your current listings and do the five by five by five by five. Do you know, do you understand the power of the five by five? No, please explain, Rolo. So let's say you've got 16 Boba Yarn Street in the market. And it's now been in the market for a while and you don't get inquiries, etc. Every, the, the five houses next to 16 Boba Yarn Street. So number 17, number 19, number whatever the numbering might be in the street. You should phone today, get to know them and remind them of why this property is in the market. Statistics show that every neighbor on a property knows somebody that they want in the area to be close to them. And statistic also shows that people move twice in one suburb in one lifetime. So it means the buyers and the database with the statistics that is there is already there. All you need to do is just start bringing cultivation and the information to them. So if this is the house, Five people to the left you should get to know at your database and five people to the right. Does that make sense now, Knox? Yes, yes. Moi, moi. 
um, there is this golden rule that they teach us. If you've got nothing to do in the office or you're getting stuck in this virtual environment is the new thing I love. You can't look at the screen anymore. Go and drive around in your area and get to know the customers. Can I tell you, and Yana will not mind me saying this. Can I tell you what's Yana's secret? The little black book and the kariki. She vies around in the estate. She knows everybody. She knows the musadi that works at that house. She knows the dog at that house. She knows that this, um, <laughs> she'll probably laugh when I say this. She's a proper hustler from door to door. She knows everybody's story inside out. And that's all for her in her little black book. And that's how she cultivates. She's one of those agents that sells the homes and then only lists it. Listen, there's a couple of other agents like that as well. Just to tell you the value and the relationships and the trust that she's got because everybody sees her quality of products and delivery on Prima Property 24. Look at her videos, look at her quality of photos and the beautiful wording that she puts into it. So send personal note cards. Now, in America, they have got a proper postal service where you can collect it now and tomorrow it's there. Can I just say what I've had as a success is as you cultivate that? And again, it takes time and it takes money. <coughs> in my equestrian area, we had these magazines, these horsey magazines we advertised in um, on a monthly basis. So I had the center spread and the back page and the other one. So because I'm a marketer or advertiser in it, they used to give me boxes of the free magazines. Now, you can pick them up at the local horsey shops in the area as well. But because I had like a lacquer page in there and I was consistent and people are curious for who's on the market and why are that to stable yard selling and what, what. It's just because it took me time to get to know them all and they were curious. So I had this little bucket where we used to do the boards because I had a lot of for sale signs. And when I had show houses, which we're getting to on a Sunday, um, I didn't do one or two. I had boards in that area that it looked like every second house was on show. Every corner where you used to drive, you would eventually think, but Rolo's got everything um, on show. Okay. Um, and then I used to drop these magazines. So people would start getting sort of that, that attitude of, I haven't got my free magazine yet. And it was purely because I was a little bit too late to go around. And just that touch of, because you know it's Kim that lives there. It's that relationship that's going to show up. Know the community. Know their stories. The open houses. As Now, open house, in our environment in Gila Williams, which is still a thing for the people in South Africa to understand, could be either for buyers to view or for other brokers or agents to come and view your property. Because it might just be that the auntie from Remax has got a special relationship and that client is going to come through her in any case. And so I used to have agent hours and invite Century 21, Pam Golding, Ross, and everybody. Come see my mandate. Let's talk about it. I'm going to bring my own people through, but let's do the deal. Quicker conversion, quicker money. Local organizations and events. Every horse show, every Saturday, I had a little gazebo handing out little bookies and roller suites. Consistency. That is the easiest way to get into your area and into the hearts of your customers. Is that visibility where they see them? Because I said to you, the quicker you get eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose, and belly to belly, see where they stay. Inaya is going to sit there at the gate and hand out. Um, um, Rasauki, Rossi, you will be at that clubhouse at that Silver Lakes every weekend with your branded little blue seat, handing out people and talking like. Hello, hello, like a golf spiel is my car key. Carla, jy slaak tent op op elke hoek in hy dorp elke naweek. Two weekends on one weekend off. Two weekends on one weekend off. 
Become the king queen of social media. Guys, when you do social media and you use Facebook and those things, it is so powerful. Um, and, and the real time, because it's that is your shop window. That's why your website, the quality of your ads, the people in the area do see what you do. Search engine optimization is unbelievable and everything is already set up that it actually just connects automatically for you. You must just create the things on command and be consistent in the posting. Come from contribution. That Lightstone report, you can download it, you can personify it and you can actually email it to people and say, this is what has happened and that's what the meaning of the blue lines, etc. is. That Lightstone information is available to any person and every person. There is so many different websites and things where they can get free reports on it. One of the favorite scripts that I like to use is, um, you are aware that the municipality is always busy with valuations. Let me send you a free report so that when you get your new bills or your valuations and you're not happy with it and you need to contest it almost, is um, then it is available, then you can always phone me. That creator directory, it is the most powerful thing that I've ever experienced. This. Every little shop in your area, the doctor, the hairdresser, the guest house, the everything, you must know. Know the story. Like you know the numbers and the suburb reports, you must know. Who's the guy at the pro shop? Who do you speak to at HOA? Who, what is the rules about dogs and advertising and having offices? Who are the small little people in, the, in Silver Lakes that work from home? Because I'm telling you now, there's insurance big people, there's attorneys and everybody in Silver Lakes working from their homes. <coughs> the, the, the neighborhood yard sale is, is purely what I'm trying to say there is what are you going to do in your suburb to come from contribution? That little small red day. So that, because you remember you need to give to receive so that people can be aware of the activity. They want to see you as that respected neighborhood person. Hello, Realtors in Heidelberg. Danny Elsine. She's on all these boards and what, what. And when she and her team arrive at a training thing, they've got this branded bus. And then all the girls get out the car. They're not Allo Realtors anymore. They've become a Remax office. They're most beautiful, loyal, and they're very consistent. Her office is something like, please correct me, 34 years, the same spot in Heidelberg. They're all branded and they've got their labels and their stickers. You know that story where like, lose weight now, ask me how. Now that is 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 you know when you walk around people want and you're in your neighborhood people want to see man look at that expert so you already have a website what i mean with start a website is um um so kenny has grown if go and look at team sold.co.za um, it's purely because all the information, it's something like a six ninety five extra a month, I think. Please don't quote me on it. I could be wrong, but that is the amount. That's why I say is it's costing money to grow this farming. But it, it, your, all your listings will feed from there. And because we feed through Integral, the creator back end, where you can add news and blogs, and that could be sharing cross-reference to your Facebook pages. Um, and there I'm saying again, look at Kenny. Kenny has got North Coast properties for sale or something like that um, on Facebook. He has got um, friends of real estate. Runel Bricknell has got these pages. Manda um, drives these farm things. Now you're going to say to me, Rolo, but it's so much to get to all of these things. It is a fixed time. Once you learn how to drive the Facebook and set it up and share the information, people and it's very cost effective these things you, once you're consistent and it flows into the neighborhood the people are going to start sharing it liking it and you are going to become top of mind what else do you think i know we're running a little bit out of time what else is there that you can add to that 12 direct so what is the 12 direct on 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 our campaigns now carla and rossi and, and guys, are you already, do you use the campaigns? Do you know what the campaigns are there for? And have you had a look at it? Please talk to me about that. 
Uh, ja, op die oomlik um, gebruik ek die CMA um, om my voet in die deur te kry. <laughs> uh, Andersens het ek nog, ja, ek het baie werk om te doen nie, so. Ah oh, ja. <laughs> mooi, mooi. The campaigns is unbelievable. So the 12 direct means once a month, when you, once you've captured the contact, the system is going to send it a lovely email. Happy Mother's Day, Happy Birthday, Father's Day, Toy Toy Day, whatever the special day in South Africa is. So there's other campaigns to stay in touch with the client, but there is so many others. Listen, I've just dodged down some other things there apart from campaigns. Just to remind you guys a little bit, because we do, you know, the, the, the point of this is to come back to the basics a little bit. That open house invitations works amazing to let people know. Listen, I've got a show house. Everybody in the suburb must know it so that they can get into the thing like, Every week they get a show house invite or every second week from Rossi. And then they're going to start getting into the habit that on a Sunday, if you want to talk real estate, just look out for Rossi's board. He's somewhere in Silver Lake. Um, uh, 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 uh. <coughs> just list it. The five, five people. Once you've listed a property and all the five people closest to that property should get that just listed. Statistics show that people find close to that property has always got somebody that would have been of interest. So the clients and the matching and the transactions in the history of the suburb and the habits of the others and the successes is there. You must just rule it. Um, they, I just want to say the, the school calendar. So it is probably one of the oldest things and for some unknown reason it is still stuck on the fridges in the houses. I have walked into friends of mine and I mean I mean this is close friends, my guys. Then the Aida auntie that I know in the meantime has gone to England focus. Her calendar is still on the side of the fridge because there's important dates that circled on it and they've never transferred it. That's just the way the people are. Please look when you walk into listings. Just look at the calendars and the fridges and where they are and what their purpose is. So your 12 direct, that once a month in your farming, making contact with your people. Look, we do have the 12 direct. But if you email phone call appointment, email phone call appointment with business cards or your websites or your information, um, uh, uh, um, you will know how you want to be in touch with your clients every month. Now, the two things I want to focus on there is three things. Is the bottom three. Thou shall never say goodbye on the telephone to any human ever again. You're, you know, it's almost like that movies when you're ready. Well, you know, in the love stories and then they start loving and then they say goodbye on the airport. And then it's not, it's not goodbye, it's see you later. That's sort of, I want to call to action so that this person can know it's going to be in touch with me again. What is your unique selling proposition? Rossi, Inai, Knox, Carla, what is that thing that makes you special that you bring to that suburb? So when I, bright tonight, my friends are all going to say, see where they state, there's one girl you only speak to in name. And your goodbye is forever changed into who do you know that I can be of real estate service and that would be interested in buying or selling? If you speak to a person or you are eyeballing to no sing to belly belly and you leave there without an extra name, surname, email address and mobile number, you are not duplicating on your activities. So beautiful people, please talk to me. What did you hear? Is there something you're going to implement? And what is there that makes you excited about your lead generation for the rest of June? Working your farming area and getting to know where your money is coming from. The floor is yours. Talk to me. Inay, talk to us. Rolo, it is a situation where what you made clear that 
it does, it's not going to happen overnight, but your presence will increase as your efforts are increasing. Nee, dit is beautiful woorde. Sê dit weer. Jo, e, sê weer. I say, you take small steps. So if your presence in, your, your presence will increase if your efforts increases. Wow, thank you for sharing that, Inai. That prospecting um, based and then marketing enhanced is what it was, is, is, is the summary what I, what I want to add to that. And Inai, like you said, and that's what I just want to repeat, the whatever you do today in real estate only shows up 90 days later. And can you imagine the conversation you and I are going to have 90 days from now? If you go back to basics and take it street for street, stick to the five by fives, then start going street to street, start small to go big. But you have to build that foundation from, you know, if you go and read the MREA, the first 119 pages is about the mindset, the six personals comes in. And there's a very, very important part there. I think it comes here pages. Um, 94 to pages 99 is where they talk about the hobo house. Think about it. It's like you building a property from scratch. There needs to be a plan. There needs to be a proper foundation. Because if the foundation and the rule of it is not put together properly, that thing is going to wobble and going to fall over is what our ref reference is to the hobo house. And to start, stop, start, stop, to think you're starting over and over and fixing it. Just keep adding to it and shifting in the activity. That's where the 135 and the 411 are so powerful that you can look back at it and go, um, this didn't work, this didn't work. Maybe I should change this to have a better result on the outcome. Thanks for sharing, Inai. Knox, talk to me. Oh, I was saying what I, I think I'm going to change and improve on is what you said that when you have that listing, when you get that listing, you must know the five people left and right and back and forth so that you understand. I, it makes a lot of sense when you say they might know someone who wants to move closer because most of the time I do too. I've got people that wants to stay closer to me, maybe it's family or friends or whoever. That made a lot of sense. So that's what I'm taking with. Awesome. Lack and Knox, thanks for sharing. Rossi, talk to us. Hello. So, you had net now iets genoem. Um, I can't even tell what, but it's an idea in my head. So, the people are not always very keen that they come to see me. A bit heavy, they're busy, or iets. So, what I now think is, I want all the busy people, what in the US state is. I will have contact and net probeer om a meeting met hulle te kry net om te praat oor hulle eie besigheid. Um, dan kan ek dalk uh, social media post begin maak een keer 'n week, een keer elke twee weke wat net al die besighede in die estate highlight. Rossi, I love what you're sharing is that you want to bring your network of people that are business people like yourself in Silver Lakes into your database and your sphere of influence. So what I would do is on my Facebook page, not every two weeks, every second day or third day, remind the customer of this people. Hi, guys. Remember, Leon is a lawyer in Silver Lakes. He specializes in family law. The next post, you know, not, not today, Leon, and tomorrow, Leon. Like sort of next, four days later or next week, have a plan on how you're going to bring Leon to the forefront. Because Leon eventually is going to see, listen, Rossi wants to be in business. Rossi wants those referrals. And then you're going to get comfortable in saying to him eventually, Leon, did you see your business is all over and my friends are liking it? And this is the person I would like to introduce to you. If you give him one referral for his business, he's definitely going to be reciprocal to that. It happens over a period of time. Before you're going to know it, your goodbyes, where you're going to go, Leon, who do you know that wants to buy or sell or would be interested in my services? That's going to become your third, fourth conversation after you've integrated with, with, the, with the business service deliveries or knowledge or referrals. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you, Rolo. Awesome. Yeah, 
Ja, ich tue nicht Riyadz. Nein, nein. Ich habe mir nicht nur die Idee gegeben. Ich kann von heute von, von probieren, da an beginnen zu arbeiten. Mooi, lecker. Well done, Rossi. There's so Thank much you. money and opportunity in Silver Lakes. And I know there's a lot of Ayendoms agente, but sweetie, but some of them are purple rinses that are sitting waiting for the business. You, Rossi, needs to now go and run towards the business. That's the plan, yeah. Awesome. Carla, talk to me. Okay, in my area, uh, there's a lot of properties that you have 20 agents plus working on the property. So um, I've listed two now. One is a swimming school and one is a, a, a guest house. Um, and I need to do something different to stand out from those other 20 agents. Um, so, you know, I, I think as soon as I get the listing, I need to promote it more, not just rely on P24 and private property. And of course, building the relationships because I, I grew up in this area and there's a lot of people that I know. <laughs> ah, oh, Carla, those are big ones. Um, I'm a little concerned about the 20 people that has listed it. So it sounds something is stuck somewhere, either price or product offering. But let's not go into that. The other thing is that I loved about, I know you want to be different. So your database needs to have updated information from you because there's such an oversupply by the sound of it. Um, I need to go and look at the stats in the area. What I like about is you grew up there and the amount of people you know. Carla, I can tell you now you haven't even touched even 10% into the people you actually know. And a simple thing is, Hello, Jelle, I can see you in Southern Business, I can see you in Keller Williams, and wie ken jylle wat wil koop en verkoop? En, hallo Tanny, hoe gaan het? As kies ek het so lang klaas met Tanny gepraat. Jo, Tanny, Tanny wil nie weet hoe goed doen my real estate bezigheid en sinne wil nie. En ek soek rechtig nog liewe listings en so. Then you're gonna start becoming a rainmaker, Carla. Yes, en ek weet, ek het, ek het per ongeluk al twee mense raak gebel, wat ek al in die verlede mee het te doen gehad het. Jy weet, heel toevallig, die swemschool wat ek geluis het, my, my kind het al geleer swem, paar jaar terug. <laughs> you see, there's more clients, you don't know it until you do it, then yeah. you will know it. Ne? Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's really that hustling to get to know everybody in your area and in your phone, because it's about the all shareholders. You just now need to find a way to match them, to cultivate, to put the profit in the bank account. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Guys, I've had an amazing morning with you. Thank you for being there. Have a fabulous Tuesday, and I wish you the right activity to show results in your businesses for the week. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Be safe. Cheers, cheers. Thank, thank you, Rolo. Thank you. Bye.